Hey you! Welcome back! Hey, how are the dice? Oh. Okay. Have you not even started your sessions yet? Hmm. Okay. So... Homework, huh? Alright. Do you need me to help you make your character? I can do that, yeah. No, that's fine. I actually, I have, um... I keep, like... Character sheets and stuff like that for different systems. Yeah, I've got... Dungeon World in here somewhere. That's the system you said you were doing, right? Not Dungeons and Dragons, you're doing... Dungeon World. That's great. See, because I actually, I would not recommend Dungeons and Dragons for a beginner. Yeah, it's gonna be way too complicated. Dungeon World's great for beginners, yes. And it's not a very popular system, but I don't know why. It's so fun. Hey, let me see here. other people in your party, you know, your friends, like, do you know what characters they're gonna do? Like, which ones are open for you to pick? Okay, so, wait, you said fighter, paladin, barbarian, druid? Okay. So, let's see, what, what kind of character are you interested in playing? I, I don't think I'd recommend druid for your first time. You know, Barbarian and Fighter, they're both gonna be very fighty, muscly guys. Um, uh, you know, the Paladin, you're gonna be doing uh, some magic as well as uh, fighting. Are you interested in that, or do you want to maybe just be like a classic fighty character? Okay, so maybe we go with a classic fighter. Does that sound good? Okay, and it's just your first time after all. So I actually, I have a fighter sheet here. Uh, we can go through it together, and then I'll give this to you to take home for your session. And I think I have an extra basic moves. It's the paladin. going to be your basic moves. We'll take a look at this in a second and I'll let you take that home too. Okay, so to get started, um, why don't we take a look at the sheets together and I can kind of explain what we're doing and then that way you won't be like totally confused when we're going through and I'm like, Okay, and then what's your charisma? And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, come here, come here. Okay, I thought we'd just have a look at the sheet before we get started so you kind of understand what I'm talking about. So you pick the fighter. Here's where you'd put your level. This is where you mark your XP. So you're gonna have the sheet. You're gonna take it with you through every session and you'll be marking your HP. Whenever you level up, then of course you can use your eraser and then mark your level. Now here's something interesting. Whenever you fail in Dungeon World, and a failure would be like a 0 to a 6 roll when you're rolling 2 d10s, you don't, you know, you don't succeed. But you would get to mark HP, so technically what you're doing is you're like learning from your failure. So that's like how you would gain experience. So let's see, let's look over here. Let's go here first to your stats. We've got strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. You've got the base number, and then you're going to have a modifier that goes in this circle here. These are all the stats you get to pick. 16 plus 2, 15 plus 1, 13 plus 1, 12 plus 0, 9 plus 0, 8 minus 1. Pick one of those to go in each one of these. My personal recommendation would be you pick 
pick the fighter, he's a fighty guy, you're probably gonna want to put more points into strength and I would also recommend constitution if you want to go for like the big tough brawny character that's not so smart, you know, musmash, then maybe you take some points away from intelligence or wisdom or charisma, maybe they're not very good at charming people just my suggestion, you don't have to do that then your max HP, this is where constitution comes into play, is going to be 10 plus the constitution. So obviously, the better you pick, the more HP you're going to have, and then this is where you would mark your current HP. The damage is going to be d10 plus, and then these are conditional. Also your armor conditional, it's going to depend on what you're wearing. You have different species you can pick from. Your character doesn't have to be a human. Be a dwarf, an elf, halfling, which is like a, a hobbit. <laughs> if you've seen Lord of the Rings, you just can't say hobbit. So he's a halfling. Or if you're feeling particularly creative, you could make your own character species here. You don't have to do that. Now with these, you know, dwarf, elf, the fun thing about Dungeon World is you kind of get to decide as players what this means. Maybe your idea of an elf is tall, beautiful, immortal, wise beans, you know, Galatriel, and um, what's his name? Why am I blanking on his name? You know, Legolas Dad. <laughs> Forgotten his name now. Maybe elves are like small, mischievous creatures that run around and make shoes. Who knows? This is up to you and your fellow players to decide. You get to create the world. So you'll pick one of these, and then if you don't want to come up with your own name, they have suggested names. So there's some dwarf names, human, elf, and halfling. I'll go through those later with you. This is your alignment. How moral you are. Do you want to be good? Do you want to be evil? Maybe you're neutral. And you can also write in your own. Maybe you want to be chaotic. Maybe you want to be lawful. And this is going to say how you will play this character. Because you're going to need to act this way. See, if you are maybe a good person and you pick evil, it might be harder for you to roleplay as an evil person. However, you're going to need to roleplay as that so that you can get your HP. Because it's doing these good these good or evil and neutral things that's going to get you more HP. At the end of the session, the GM will ask you, you know, did you defend those weaker than you? If so, you get XP. Or, did you kill a defenseless or surrendered enemy? If yes, mark HP. Okay? So pick one that you really think you're going to do well as roleplaying as. Now we've also got some starting moves here. And these are just limited specifically to the fighter. You've got bend bars, lift gates. When you use pure strength to destroy an inanimate obstacle, roll plus your strength modifier. On a 10 plus, you get to choose three of these things. And on a 7 to 9, you only choose two. Then again, 1 to 6 would be a failure, but you mark HP. XP, not HP, sorry. And those things you could pick from is, it doesn't take a long time, nothing of value is damaged, it doesn't make an inordinate amount of noise, or you can fix the thing again without a lot of effort. So, you're a strong guy. Another starting move is armored. You ignore the clumsy dark on armor you wear. Darks are something that we don't need to talk too much about, but it's more like it's a modifier that the GM could use to talk about um, how you go about role playing. Like if your army is clum clumsy, maybe you trip over a rock and you hurt yourself in a big battle. But then if you're armored, you would ignore that. Okay. This is the fun bit. You as the fighter are going to get a signature weapon. You get to name your weapon. This is your weapon. There are many like it, but this one is yours. Your weapon is your best friend. 
and it is your life. You master it as you master your life. Your weapon, without you, is useless. Without your weapon, you are useless. You must wield your weapon, true. So we're gonna give it a name. They've suggested some names if you don't want to come up with one your own. Then you'll choose a base description, which are all starting to wait. Uh, you see sword, spear, axe flail, hammer, fists, or if they don't mention one that you've thought of, you could add it. Then you can choose a range, hand, close, or reach. You are, of course, a melee fighter. Then you choose a range that would best fit the weapon, hand, hand to hand, which would be like, you know, fists, or maybe a hammer, close, be like sword or an axe, reach, be like spear, it's long, you could you don't have to be right next to them. And then you can choose two enhancements. Hooks and spikes is plus one damage, but it's also plus one weight. And remember, we start at base two weight. So, that would be plus three. Sharp, plus two piercing. Perfectly weighted, add precise, that's attack. Serrated edges, plus one damage. Glows in the presence of one type of creature. Think sting. Yeah? Huge. Add messy and forceful. First of all, choose an extra range, okay? So we could pick one more. Maybe it's hand to hand and it's close. Or close in reach. Well crafted, minus one weight. Now it's nice and light. So now we've gone down to just plus one weight. And we've got a couple of additional ones. If you want to come up with them and the GM approves of it, then you can mark those, but you get to pick two. Choose a look. Is it ancient? Is it sinister? Unblemished? Bloodstained? Ornate? Or do you want to come up with one your own? See, the game dungeon world gives you a lot of room to be creative and really create the character you like. They're also look up here. It's an option to change, of course, how your character looks, you know. How does this fighter look? We've got four different categories to talk about. The body, the eyes, the hair, the skin. Is the body built, live, ravaged? Like they give you three options here. Or, of course, you can write in your own. Are the eyes hard, dead, eager? The hair, is it wild? Shorn, battered helm, skin callous, tanned, scarred. Okay, so really picture this fighter in your mind. How do they look? And then down here you'll see bonds. This isn't something you're going to do with me, but something you're going to do with your other players in the GM. Because you're going to pick different characters that you're playing with, and you're going to write bonds to them, and then when you fulfill these bonds, you get XP. Uh, we'll briefly look at the second page. So this is your gear up here. You're going to start with your weapon, of course, which you'll fill in the name there and how heavy it is. Remember, it started as two, but different modifiers. You also start with dungeon rations. This is just food. When you're uh, in the dungeon or somewhere else and you don't have food, you can just use this and you eat. You got five of them, five uses, so you can mark them in and then erase them as you eat them. And it's one weight for all five. Then you choose your defenses. You could have chainmail, one armor, one weight, and adventuring gear. Adventuring gear is quite multifaceted. Say you are stuck down in a deep pit and you want to climb your way up, but you need a rope, you could say, Hey, I'm gonna use one of my adventuring gear. It's a rope. And then the GM would be like, okay, you've used one adventuring gear, you mark it away. So, quite versatile. Scale armor, two armor, worn, so there's that clumsy tag, and three weight. So pick one of those. Then you would choose two of these. So you could pick two healing potions, no weight. You drink and you heal. 10 HP, more one ability. Can do those. Shield, which is plus one armor and two weight. And antitoxin, so you'd use that to cure poisons. Plus, more dungeon rations. You get five more. 
but loves poultices and herbs. So you get two of those and they, they heal 7 HP. Or 22 coins. So you pick two of those. Here are your coins. This is where you put them in. And for every 100 coins, it's one weight. Here's your load. How much are you carrying? And that's going to be 12 plus your strength modifier. You put that number there and then whatever load you currently have will go there. All this space is going to be where you would put in your inventory. Your special shiny treasures that you pick up while you're adventuring. You just mark them down here. Alright. So these are your advanced moves that you'd pick from level 2 on. We won't look too far into them because you don't need to worry about it right now. Merciless, Heirloom, Armor Mastery, Scene Red, Improved Weapon, Scent of Blood, Iron Hide, Blacksmith, Interrogator, and Multiclassing is a whole other thing. And then we have even more advanced moves from level 6 on. So do you think you're getting an idea? Maybe a character's coming to your mind? Let me just briefly show you your sheet. I have this. this is your own. Your basic moves sheet that you're gonna have. You're gonna keep this with you as well as your character sheet. You most want to look at hack and slash, that's your basic attack you'll be doing with your special weapon. When you attack an enemy in melee, you roll plus your strength modifier, and on a 10 plus, you, you do the damage, you don't get any damage in return. And, um, if you choose, you could also do 1d6 of damage, however, then you're exposing yourself to the enemy's attack. And then on a 7 to 9, you would do the damage, but the enemy also gets to attack you. Uh, you're also probably going to be using Defy Danger quite a bit. When you act despite an imminent threat, threat or suffer calamity, you could say how you deal with it and you roll. And um, if you do it by powering through, strength by getting out of the way or acting fast, dexterity by enduring, constitution with quick thinking, intelligence through mental fortitude, wisdom, sing, charm, and social grace, charisma. And on again, on the 10 plus, you do it and nothing bad happens. On a 7 to 9, you're gonna do it, but uh, you're gonna stumble, hesitate, or flinch, and the GM is gonna offer you a worse outcome, a hard bargain, or an ugly choice mainly how the game's gonna go. When you roll 10+, plus, 10, 11, 12, you do it. Good job. No bad side effects. No, nothing negative. On a 7 to 9, yeah, you did it. However, the GM's gonna say something not so great that happens. And on a 1 to 6, it's gonna be a flat out, you didn't do it. However, you'll then mark that XP. You've learned from your mistake, uh, but something bad might happen. You don't need to worry about folly because you don't have a you know a ranged weapon. Um, um, yeah, these are pretty much these are going to be the more important ones. The GM will go over the others with you. If it would help you, I can show you the character that I've made in my own personal d dungeon world game. This is my character. Her name is Kalis Mosswood. She's an elf. She's got grey, sharp eyes, braided hair, camouflaged clothes, lithe body, and she's tall. So her strength, she's not super strong. Her strength is 9, no modifier. Her intelligence is 12, no modifier. She's very dexterous. Her dexterity is 16 with a plus 2 modifier. Her wisdom is also plus 16 with a plus 2 modifier. Constitution is 13 with a plus 1. And she's not super charismatic. My max HP is 21. My armor is 1. I'm neutral, so my alignment thing is to help an animal or spirit of the wild. And whenever I do that, I get XP. As you can see, she's level 3. And I also have an animal companion. She is a raven named Willow, who is ferocity of two, cunning two, no armor, the one instinct. She's stealthy, she's got keen senses, she 
can scout and perform and fight monsters, but she's stubborn. I've got these bonds with other members of my party. And I've completed this one, and this one, I need to do this one with, uh, Tisra, and this one with Usador, and I've written some more. Um, I also have a, a cow, because I have this advanced move where I can speak with and understand animals. So I can speak with and understand my raven, Willow, and also my cow, when named Bess. And I carry some food for Bess. I also have arrows, a spear, 61 coins, my load is 7 out of 10. Uh, and I chose another training for my companion. Not level 6 yet, so I can't do any of these. So, now you see how I've made my character. Does that make you inspired? I can show you actually, I accidentally picked it up. This is a drawing my companion made of her character. Her name is Tizra. She's a dwarf cleric. And uh, she's great. She's a little dwarf with blue hair. She's very good. And she worships uh, this god named Solnara. And she's always trying to convert us to the teachings of Solnara. No one in the party's interested. And she can talk to stones. She frequently tries to speak to the stones around us and get more info. We also have filled out this map together. We've been to a lot of these places, or we've heard of these places. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun, I think. Okay, so do you think you have an idea of your character? Can you visualize them? I don't know, personally, like, whenever I start to make a new character, I see them in my mind, you know, and I like, I, I know exactly how they look, and yeah, they, be, they come to life in my head. So do you have that? Kind of, we'll, we'll get there together, don't worry. Uh, first off, let's talk about what species you wanted to go with. Did you want to come up with your own species? I mean, that's pretty intense, but if you want to, you know, I'm not gonna say no. Or dwarf, human. Okay. That's totally fine. Being a human is fine. Okay, I'm gonna mark human for you. So, uh, for a human, it does say, uh, once per battle, you may reroll a single damage roll. Yours or someone else's. That's kind of you know, nice, like, you didn't get the option you wanted, so you kind of just change fate, change it a little bit. Okay, and, um, you ready to name your character, or do you want to do look first? Alright, let's do look first. So, the suggestions they have for body, we've got built, lithe, Ravaged or make your own? What do you think? Okay. Then for eyes, you like hard eyes, dead eyes, eager eyes, or make your own? Okay. For hair, what do you think? Wild. Shorn, a battered helm, or make your own? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds cool, All right? You're good at this. For skin, calloused, tanned, scarred, or something else. Alright, battle weary, huh? Yeah, this card makes sense. Okay, let's talk names now. So we've got some suggested human names. They are Hawk, with an E on the end. Uh, 
Rudiger Richter Gregor That's a great one Brianna Walton Castor Shanna Ajax Hob Did any of those speak to you? Or do you want to come up with your own? Yeah Hawk, Rudiger, Gregor, Brianne, Walton, Castor, Shanna, Ajax, Hob Alrighty Gregor, the fighter, I love it So, tell me is Gregor good? Is Gregor neutral or evil? Or, or maybe something else like I mentioned And again, this is totally depending on how you want to roleplay the character So good to get that XP would be defend those weaker than you So, you know, a protector, a savior Neutral would be to defeat a worthy opponent Evil would be a kill, a defenseless or a surrendered enemy And then if you want to create your own, you could write your own uh, thing Okay, alright Now that's fine Yeah, my character is neutral as you saw Okay, so remember to get that XP, you want to just defeat a worthy opponent So basically just kill creatures, things, enemies Let's talk your stats. All right. So remember, I'll, I'll go over again the six that you have to fill in: strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Remember my recommendation: strength and constitution. But maybe you guys a really wise, charismatic fighter. Who is Gregor? You know. Okay, I, I definitely, I would recommend strength, that's gonna help you out when you fight So do you want to place your highest one in that? That would be a base a strength of 16 with a plus 2 modifier Let's do that then, okay So your strength is gonna be 16 And we're gonna have that plus 2 Okay, the next one is a base of 15 with a plus 1 modifier Where do you want to put that? Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma Mmm, okay, sticking with my suggestions, mmm That will never stir you wrong Alright, so 15, and we'll do the plus 1 Okay, next, you've got a base of 13 with a plus 1 Do you want to put that in Dexterity, Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma? So yeah, dexterity would be like, how nimble are you? How quickly can you move? How, you know, good are you going to be moving around with your weapon and getting out of situations? It's good for when you're fighting, yeah If you tend to be more combat-based than like a face character You know, face character being like, they talk a lot and they're the face of the group I'm guessing Gregor's not going to be that guy uh, Could be You want to put, we'll put in dexterity So that was the plus, there's the 13 with the plus 1 Okay 13 and a plus 1 to dexterity Intelligence, wisdom, and charisma are left So one of those is going to be a base of 12 with no modifier One's going to be a base of 9 with no modifier And one is going to be an 8 Minus one. So maybe decide of uh, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, which of those three is Gregor worst at? Okay, so he's the big dumb brute, yeah? Okay, so we'll add the eight with the minus one to intelligence. Eight, and he's got a min that's a minus one on all your intelligence rolls. Are you gonna do like the barbarian like not barbarian but like the me, Gregor. <laughs> me, dumb human. <laughs> yeah. It'd be kind of funny. You could be the comedic, you know, one of the group. Everyone needs a little, little comedy at times, especially some levity in dark times. Alright. 
and then decide uh, between wisdom and charisma which one do you want to have the 12 and which one do you want to be 9 that makes sense, that makes sense, okay then wisdom will be the 9 with no modifier charisma, so maybe Gregor's you know, not so ugly and terrible looking maybe he's kind of charming in his muscles and no brain you know well not totally charming because it's only 12 okay 12 and no modifier okay your max HP is 10 plus your constitution which was 15 so you're gonna have 25 max HP that's not time to do your weapon. That's a good one. Okay, so uh, give your weapon a name slash title. I'll read you the suggestions. There's uh, the Mangler, Dragon's Tooth, Bane, Heart Seeker, Giant's Fist, Misery, Briar Patch, Tempest, Bone Saw, Nightfall, Kingmaker, or Reckoning? Did any of those speak to you? Yeah, real quick. The Mangler, Dragon's Tooth, Bane, Heartseeker, Giant's Fist, Misery, Briar Patch, Tempest, Bonesaw, Nightfall, Kingmaker, and Reckoning. Alright, I like it too. So, Gregor and Bane. Now, is Bane a sword, an axe, a hammer, spear, a flail, or just your fists? Or you could come up with another one. Okay. Alright. Classic sword? That sounds good. That's good. And um, what range do you think? Is best for that? Would you say that's hand, close, or reach? I, I would say that's close because it could be a pretty long sword, but then you could also say it's quite a short sword. Okay, we'll go. F yeah, we'll go f close then. Okay, and you get to do choose two of those uh, enhancements. I'll read them again. So, hooks and spikes. Plus one damage, but plus one weight. Don't forget, Bane is plus two weight already. So, uh, hooks and spikes, plus one damage, plus one weight. Sharp, plus two piercing. Sharp sword, perfectly weighted. Then that would add the precise tag, and that's gonna be more like up to the GM to decide exactly what that means. Uh, serrated edges, plus one damage glows in the presence of one type of creature, and then you'll get to name the creature. Pretty cool. <laughs> Huge. That would add the messy and the forceful tag. Versatile. And you could pick another range. And well crafted. That would be minus one weight. Or you could ride your own. Okay, so we, Bane is huge. Alright. Yes. Yes. Gregor's Bane. That's what you should call it. Yeah. I'm really like invested in Bane as a character now. I'm like, yeah, I can picture him. Or maybe I'm just picturing uh, Gregor from What We Do in the Shadows. That's definitely what I was thinking. I am cleaning lady. <laughs> so what, uh, what else? There was a uh, hooks and spikes, plus one damage, plus one weight, sharp, plus two piercing, perfectly weighted, serrated edges. Rated edges. Alright. I do not want to meet Bane, I'll say that. Well, not in like a enemy way. And then how does Gregor not Gregor Bane look? Ancient, sinister, unblemished, blood stained, ornate, or do you want to write your own? Okay. Alright. 
nice. This is definitely shaping up to be a very exciting character. Alright. Uh, don't forget the bonds. You're going to be doing those with, um, with your compatriots, your companions. One of them is, um, this person owes me their life and I demand their respect. Okay? Uh, one person is soft, but I will make them hard, like me, like Gregor. Um, I've sworn a blood oath to keep this person safe. Uh, the last one is this person is dead weight. I won't go out of my way for them. So once I guess you're introduced to your friend's characters, you can kind of decide like who would I respect or maybe this person is useless. I don't see any point in there being a bard. So yeah, maybe. So you can kind of think about those as soon as you start getting introduced to like, your companions. Let's go to the next page. So, your signature weapon, you start with Bane. Uh, and Bane was, because we didn't have any weight modifiers, right? So, he, Bane is just a weight of doom. Okay. Next, we're going to choose your defenses. Uh, so I'll go over those again. Um, there was chainmail and adventuring gear. The chainmail would be plus one armor, worn one weight, and then the adventuring gear. Remember, I explained that to you. Um, or the scale armor, so that's plus two armor. You're getting the additional armor, however, it is three weight. So, is it worth it to have the additional weight for the additional armor and also losing that adventuring gear? Okay, and, uh, I think I think that makes sense. He is all about being as big and tough as possible, yeah. Even if it means <sighs> risking that adventuring gear, okay. And next, you get to choose two of these. So, you could pick from... Uh, Two healing potions, uh, the shield, which is uh, one armor, two weight, the antitoxins, the dungeon rations, and the poultices and herbs, and the extra coins. Shield, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Alright, healing potions. Yeah. Gregor relies on no man to heal him. Gregor heals himself. Alright, the advanced moves. Again, you won't worry about that until you do level up. Uh, let's figure out your load. That is 12 plus your strength modifier, and I think you're, yeah, you've got the plus 2, right? Yeah, okay. So your load is going to be 14. And then, if you pick up anything along the way, you'll put that in your the inventory space over there. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is Gregor the fighter. Gregor is neutral. Gregor is tough and scarred with heart and eyes. He's very scary looking. He strikes fear into the hearts of everyone who sees him. He's incredibly strong. Very high constitution. Very good. Uh, pretty dexterous. Somewhat charismatic. Not very wise and really not at all intelligent. Gregor's a human. And Gregor has a special weapon called Bane. Bane is a giant sword with serrated edges for close combat. And uh, you've chosen, oh yeah, sorry. Gregor has scale armor with two healing potions and a shield. How are you feeling about this? Like, nothing's set in stone, you know? If you, if you 
take this home and you're lying in bed tonight and you're like, no, wait, I want Gregor to be evil or good or um, I don't want Bane to be a sword. You haven't started the session yet. I'm, you just go in a race and make those changes. That's, that's totally fine. Okay, I'm gonna give you this sheet that we just worked on together. And I'm gonna give you your basic moves. It also has some other stuff in there uh, from, from other things. Like the, um, I think it's like a expansion and I don't know if you'll be doing that. So some of that you might have to just disregard. Okay, so here's your move sheet. Uh, Here's Gregor's sheet. I make notes on the back. I just write on the back of my sheet. Or you could doodle. Maybe you could do a drawing of Gregor and Bane, just like my friend did of her character. And... Yeah. I think we are all done. Don't forget, uh, for this you'll be rolling the 2d6s when you do combat mainly, so that's how, um, remember 10 to a 12 would be a, like, a critical success, you, you did it and nothing bad happens at all, and then the 7 to 9 would be like, you did it, but maybe something not so cool happens, and then the 1 to the 6s. Well, you failed, but at least you get to mark XP and maybe level up a little bit sooner. So, you finally get to use those dice you bought, and if you ever find yourself wanting to upgrade, don't forget, I've got a very pretty, shiny clickety clacks at the click clack shack. Oh, Cece, thank you so much for coming back in. I'm really glad you took me up on my offer. It was really fun helping, I was gonna say birth Gregor, but that sounds really weird, help bring Gregor to life. Um, please come back and tell me how the game goes because I am very invested now. Maybe my character, Kalis, will run into Gregor one day. We can do a session together. That would be fun, right? <laughs> okay, you have a ton of fun. I'll see you later, alright? forget, stop back anytime. Alright, it's good to see you too. Have fun. Bye, Gregor.